Good evening, everybody, and welcome to this uh, free live session brought to you by Talent Sprint. And uh, in this session, we're going to focus on uh, the RRB mains exam. We've already covered two uh, sessions on quant and reasoning, and today would be the English language. So hi, Arun, Venu, Gaurav, Indu, Kavita, Sarika, Ravneet, and I saw some more people. Mosim, Anusha, Ramu, Cosmos, Abhishek, Amu, Rahul, Suraj, Devika, Abdul, Kalam, uh, <clears throat> Rajashekar, Balamurli, and uh, MS Gaud, and a few more people joining. Uh, so welcome, welcome to uh, this evening session. I don't know how many of you are from Chennai. Uh, if you're there, you know it's raining. Um, so hopefully the uh, previous two sessions uh, I'm sure it was quite helpful and effective for you guys in, in learning a whole load of strategies. And uh, though this session uh, is addressed specifically to RRB mains exam, you and I know that we can apply the same strategies and techniques because the question types are pretty much the same, like Rohit had mentioned, right? So this, again, uh, is with, uh, along with grade up, uh, as usual for this particular series. So um, we have questions that uh, GradeUp has selected, and that's exactly what we're going to be uh, discussing in today's session, right? So we will cover uh, a range of questions, um, ranging from close passage to jumble sentence to spot the error to sentence improvement uh, and RC. Uh, so a lot of them are saying, I'm very scared. Uh, in English. I'm very scared in English. Yes, I I can see why you're scared. Uh, <coughs> Deepak. So, um, so please excuse me, I have a little bit of cold, but uh, hopefully you're able to hear me. Uh, I'll try to throw out my voice as much as possible, uh, but please bear with me. Some more people have joined. Uh, Deepak Gopik, Saurav Bhaskar, uh, Pranali Ranjit, Okay, so um, shall we get started without wasting any time? <laughs> Suraj is like, please start. I already have a signal. So let me share the PPT and uh, we'll take it from there. Yes, Shiva. Um, so the first one seems like a close passage with five blanks. I guess they've just taken it from a <coughs> question paper, so it shows eight to 12. <clears throat> but I'm assuming um, there are just five blanks to it. So uh, as always, uh, the strategy for close passage is to, uh, to skim the passage, right? A quick read for us to be able to identify associated words. That's what we'll do. Um, and then we, we're going to apply a whole lot of strategies, which you should be familiar with by now, right? We've, we've done close passage earlier. It's pretty much the same strategies that we will apply for fill in the blanks for this as well, right? So we're going to be paying attention to clues in the context. Is the context giving us a positive or negative meaning? Are there collocations? Um, things like that. Okay, so let me get back to the passage. I'll give you about, uh, it seems like a pretty, it's a five blank passage, so you should be able to read it well within a minute. Yeah, let's start. So read it in your mind. I'm not going to read it loud. So after a minute, we'll quickly brainstorm.
So uh, that's about a minute. I don't need you to give me the answers. We look at the options and then we'll uh, do this together, right? So uh, let's start with the first blank. Um, the Royal Commission on Agriculture in its report in 1928 had laid stress on dash science to develop and spread new agricultural technologies for the irrigated, uh, arid and semi-arid areas. So the options are right here for the eighth blank. Option one, triggering, elucidating, harnessing, deriding, serving. And if you notice a pattern in the options, everything is a continuous tense uh, verb, right? ING. Did you notice that? <clears throat> so what you can do, there are quite a bit of options that you can do. One is you can apply the substitution method, right? If I have to uh, use my own word in this blank, what word will I use? Understand what the meaning uh, the context is trying to express. The Royal Commission on Agriculture in its report in 1928 had laid stress on dash science to develop and spread new agricultural technologies for the so if we if we look at the um, the context right they're trying to do something good which is what to develop and spread new agricultural technologies for all this okay for these areas so if having said that the the context first of all gives us positive meaning one right and what are they trying to get help from from science to do all this to develop and spread so i need a first of all i need a positive word right because if i am if i'm using science to develop and spread new agricultural technologies in certain areas i'm i obviously need a positive word and not a negative word let's look at our options right now <clears throat> triggering to trigger something uh, for example if i call you by a bad name or if I shout at you, it will trigger an immediate reaction or response from you, right? That's one meaning. So where I am to stir something out of you or if you're an asthma patient, right? Dust can trigger an asthma attack, right? So triggering means is to stir or to initiate something, okay? In the context, we are looking at a word where are we, are we saying I want to trigger science to develop or I want to use or utilize science to do this, right? What's the meaning that we need? Triggering is not the most effective word. Elucidating. Elucidating means, so let's say one of you asked me a question and say, um, Sylvia, can you please explain that? And instead of clarifying your doubt, I just give a one, one word answer, right? Which means I haven't elucidated, I haven't explained your uh, question clearly or your doubt. I haven't answered your doubt clearly, right? So to elucidate means to say something clearly and that's not the meaning we need in the context. Let's look at our third word, harnessing. To harness something means what? <coughs> to make use of, right? Like I can harness the source of sun to generate heat and power, right? You're utilizing something to, as a, uh, to give something positive as a result, right? Harness seems like our best fit so far because we're saying, let me harness science so that I can develop and spread these new technologies, right? And some of you came back and said deriding. What's to deride? <clears throat> to deride, in fact, is a negative word, right? If I say, uh, if, I, if I make fun of you, or if I say something uh, insulting or haughtily to you, right? That is deriding, not the right word in the context. In fact, deriding will be the option that I will eliminate first because it's a negative word and I need a positive word. And the last one is serving, right? Serving is a very common word. We know that serve, to serve means to help, to support. You're not trying to serve science. You're using science to do something, right? So out of the given options, the best or the most effective option is option three, harnessing, okay? Please understand the context. So the Royal Commission is laying stress on using science, utilizing science to develop and serve, not trigger, not elucidate, not deride or serve. Are you, 
Yeah. So harnessing. Okay. So understood, Jocelyn. I'm sure, like Jocelyn, a lot of you, some of these words might be completely new. You have no idea of the meaning, and that could also be one of the reasons why you're finding it difficult to get the right answer. Yeah. So for the eighth, uh, I mean, rather the first blank, it's harnessing. Let's move on. However, the quantum of efforts generated in agricultural engineering. So this is the, they've said, boss, this is what you need to focus on. You can use science to do this, to develop and spread new technologies for in these areas. However, so I have, a, I have an antonym uh, hint word there. However, the quantum of efforts generated in agricultural and engineering research and education till 1947 uh, was microscopic in relation to the magnitude and dash of the problems awaiting solutions. So they're saying there are so many problems that require solutions, but <clears throat> for the ninth blank, <clears throat> for the ninth blank, what are the options? Diversity, Bantam, rigorous, both B and C, abrasive. Aditya says abrasive. What do you think are the options for the ninth blank? Gaud says one. So let's pay attention to the context itself, right? I have this synonym. Uh, Synonym hint word and there, right? And I'm going to pay attention to the word next to it, magnitude, right? So usually I'm familiar with this um, collocation called range and magnitude. What's the range and magnitude of something, right? And if I have to substitute range with one of the options, I would say diversity. Magnitude and diversity. So what's, what's this bantam? What is this? I'm sure this is a new word. You have no idea of this word. Bantam, uh, just always uh, picture a petite, small person, but very spirited, very animated, right? So maybe you can um, quickly relate it to someone whom you know, who's very small in size, but super spirited and animated. So that's, uh, that person is a, is bantam. So again, not the right word in the context, right? Uh, rigorous, we all know. <clears throat> Immediately, uh, I I'm hoping rigorous is a pretty simple word. I'm hoping you don't have an issue with understanding the meaning of rigorous. Uh, rigorous, first of all, is um, an adjective, O-U-S suffix, right? So rigorous schedule means very uh, demanding schedule or uh, you can quickly associate words to rigorous, a rigorous taskmaster, or rigorous laws, stringent, strict laws, severe laws, right? You can even have rigorous weather, climate, unpleasant, <coughs> or you might go through a rigorous training, which is very a challenging training, right? So rigorous again is not the right word in the context. And what's abrasive? Okay, I like what Pavan is saying for bantam. Height come fight, uh, fight zyada. <laughs> What's abrasive? Um, quick collocations, abrasive remarks, which means your remarks, something that you said was hurtful or insulting. Someone can, ha someone can have an abrasive personality. Uh, this person is very unpleasant or very harsh in manner in the way they behave. Yeah, so again, that's not the right word. So here, the right word to go in the blank is diversity, magnitude and diversity. Let's move on. Uh, the, um, where were we? Yeah, so the manpower for agricultural engineering research in the ICAR system was dashed both qualitatively and quantitatively for facing successfully 
the numerous problems of developing equipment and technologies for uh, mechanization of agriculture, for maximizing efficiency of costly inputs like seeds, fertilizers, reduction of dash and employment in rural areas. So keeping in mind uh, reduction of something that is not positive, right? Why would you otherwise want a reduction of that? So from my options, can you quickly, I'm sorry, I moved on to the 11th plank. We still have to finish 10th plank, right? Let's focus on that. So the manpower for agricultural engineering research in the ICAR system was dash. What are my options? Uh, bulwark, inadequate, precise, stringent, and exacting. So what do you think can be the logical option to uh, blank 10? Some of you are saying stringent, option four. Some of you are saying option two, inadequate. But let's look at what the answer is, right? So there's a clue, right, for you. The uh, Remember, close passage is all about context. The preceding context gives you a clue. However, this is the plan. But however, the efforts were microscopic, which means Hardly any efforts was made. So in the next context, the manpower for agricultural engineering research in the ICR system was, what's the meaning of bulwark? For those of you who don't know, uh, you can bulwark against danger. So bulwark means it's like almost like a defensive uh, wall kind of a thing. Not the right word that we need in the context, right? So we can eliminate that. It's a, it's a defensive wall not the context that we need. Inadequate, yes, maybe. Precise means exact, accurate. Again, not the right word, right? That's precisely the point. That's not the meaning that the context needs. Stringent, we just saw, strict, severe. <coughs> Stringent laws, stringent measures, stringent policies, stringent rules. These are all collocations. I don't need this word in the context. Exacting means, again, same thing. You can have an exacting job, an exacting teacher, an exacting task demanding. Hard, taxing, demanding. Right? Not the right word we need. So. Option two, the manpower for agri the manpower was inadequate both qualitatively and quantitatively. So whoever said four, the manpower was not strict, but it was not enough both qualitatively and quantitatively for facing successfully the numerous problems of developing. So we we need people, and we need we need people with quality as well as we need more number of people. So both we're missing to address the numerous problems, right? Keep looking at the context. So was inadequate, we move on. Numerous problems of developing equipment and technologies for mechanization of agriculture, for maximizing efficiency of costly inputs like seeds, fertilizers, reduction of what? Spartan, ubiquitousness, nastiness, drudgery, and improvement. So let's look at our, understand our options first, right? Some of the words, again, might be completely new to you. So I already pointed out saying this is your clue. Reduction of something, negative. Otherwise, why would you want to reduce it? What is Spartan? I'm sure you would have seen the movie, Spartans, but... Uh, Spartan again can have different meanings, right? You can have a Spartan lifestyle, meaning very frugal, simple. Uh, <coughs> uh, just to address prin princess for the tenth blank, it should actually be precise and not inadequate. Let's address that quickly. So if you go back to the context prints, we're talking about the manpower, right? If the manpower was precise, was exactly what they needed 
for both both qualitatively and quantitatively, then they should have been able to take care of the problems. But that's not what the context is saying, right? The previous context is saying it was not the efforts that were taken were so microscopic, which means they did not get the required manpower, both qualitatively and quantitatively. So precise is not the right word. Because the manpower was inadequate, they were not able to address the numerous problems. Yeah. OK, coming back to Spartan for the 11th plank. Let me go back to the context. So Spartan, I said, you know, uh, you can have a Spartan upbringing, which can be very strict or austere, right? So not the right word in the context again, right? It's almost like a uh, positive word here. Ubiquitous means omnipresent. That's again not the right word here. Reduction of omnipresence doesn't make sense. Reduction of something austere or simple or frugal doesn't make sense. Nastiness. Reduction of nastiness is too vague, right? It's not in line with the context. We're talking about uh, reduction of, I need uh, something that is more in line with the what the context is talking about, right? So nastiness is too vague. Drudgery, on the other hand, what's drudgery? Like you might have come across this word saying, you know, take out the drudgery out of your work. Like you're so used to the routine work, you know, which is very, it can be dull. You're doing the same thing every day, right? So take out the drudgery out of your work means something that is very uh, dull, something that is routine, something that is also, it could also mean very menial, unpleasant work, right? So in this context, we're talking about how can I get rid of, yes, Saurabh, drudgery in this context is more leaning more towards something that is tedious, right? It takes a lot of, uh, it demands, very demanding or, you know, it can also mean menial or unpleasant work or monotonous, right? So in the context, they want to reduce all that. Anything that is tedious or menial or unpleasant or monotonous, they want to get rid of that. And employment in rural areas. So the most effective improvement is not. Why, why would they want to reduction of improvement? That doesn't make sense, right? So we can safely say the most effective word to go in blank 11 is drudgery. Before the mid-1960s, India relied on imports and food aid to meet domestic requirements. However, two years of severe drought in 1965-1966 convinced India to dash its agricultural policy and that they could not rely on foreign aid and imports for food security. So the, 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 the drought in 1965-1966 kind of awakened India and said, hey, you need to do something about the agricultural policy so that you, again, you don't even have to rely on foreign help, foreign aid, foreign support. So let's go back to the context. Let's look at our options. Uh, tumult, rancor, reform, plod, both A and D. What's tumult? <coughs> um, it can be, uh, what do I say, like a, disorderly commotion, disturbance, a great noise, you know, where you have a crowd, not the right word, right? Rancor means bitter, like you have a long lasting resentment with somebody, not the right word again. Reform means change, right? You're taking some action to change or improve what is wrong. So, yeah. So that would be the most ideal. Plod, when I think of plod, I can only think of a donkey. Like donkey's plod. Right? Some, so some, some, something or somebody that, not something, uh, walking very slowly and, you know, with heavy steps. I can, only, I can only picture a donkey plodding. Again, not the right word in the context. So, definitely not tumult or plod. So our answer is, reform. You want convince India to make some change. 
yeah, India to reform its agricultural policy and that they could not rely on foreign aids and imports for food security. There you go. So, any doubts before we move to the next section? So, all we've done is, Ekta, I understand, uh, I'm, I'm not keeping well actually, I'm, I'm sick, but uh, I still decided to go on with the session today because I thought you should not miss the session. So, please bear with me. Uh, I think you joined a little late, Ekta. So, anyway, uh, looking at the context, right, what we've done is we've uh, looked at the context, we've looked at words, clues from the context, right, and we figured out the meaning. And I understand for a lot of you, the problem was there were a lot of new words, so you may have found it um, a little tough. Two, yeah, rancor means um, hatred. I mean, I, yeah, somebody who uh, has a lot of ill will or is, is, is carrying resentment, right? That's what rancor means. Again, that's not the word that we need. We want India to change. Yeah, that is a positive word. That is a positive word. And that's what we need, right, in the context. That's why we're removing all the negative words. Tumult and rancor and plod is an unrelated word. The only positive word is reform which brings a positive change. That's what they want. So they don't have to rely on foreign aid or support. Got it? Okay, so we've just covered one question type. Let's move to the next one. <coughs> uh, Saurabh, again, I think you came late. Uh, bantam is, uh, picture bantam to somebody who is extremely short but very spirited and animated. Yeah? Shall we move to the next question type? I, I don't, I don't uh, see a lot of questions. So let's move to the next one. Huh. Uh, okay, this is a jumble sentence. One, two, three, four, five, six sentences. Okay. Okay, so let's look at the six sentences quickly. See, the only thing that I keep saying is uh, for jumble sentence, you can, um, what can I say? Hey, I just explained uh, rancor, Sinzo. I think you guys are coming late, so <clears throat> you guys are missing out on the explanations. But moving forward, for jumble sentence, we I've shared the strategies. Just apply the same thing, right? Look for repeat words or phrases. Why is that? Because we need to identify the topic sentence. And then just put two and two together, ask questions, uh, identify uh, some, uh, you know, phrases within the context to see what goes with what. So that's exactly what we're going to do, right? Maybe you found the close passage a little tough on the higher end, but it's good. It's good for us to practice challenging passages. So if, if something easier comes, great, we'll be able to do it. If something like this comes, we can still manage. Let's look at jumble sentence. So, six sentences, what I'm going to do is, um, I'll give you another, I don't think this is a very difficult one, so I'll give you exactly a minute, yeah? Your time starts now. Do this and uh, then probably we will look at, uh, you can give out the sequence if you want to. Just, just try and do it honestly. Don't Google stuff. <laughs> yeah. So it's already twenty seconds gone. Yes, Kala, you stick with me. I'll take you through the fundamentals when I'm explaining it. Shobhan is saying for sentence already be. Shobhan, I want you to take the next thirty seconds and think of what the sequence can be. You can put out the sequence. Don't give me the answers. This is going to be the first sentence. That is going to be the first sentence. Don't waste your time. Take this time. Look at all the context. Form your sequence. Be ready with your sequence. <laughs> Saurabh, you're funny. I already have people coming back and saying, B is the... Uh, 
topic sentence or f is this topic uh, f is the topic sentence but let's see which one it is okay in fact it's more than a minute so let's quickly look at it okay so <clears throat> whoever has jumbophobia saurabh and uh, kalai listen carefully so uh, the first thing i always keep saying is look for repeat words or phrases in the context right that will always help me uh, identify what the topic sentence is so if i look at my repeat words or phrases i have the one thing that is internet banking internet online services related to internet again right internet banking internet banking so i know that this context revolves around internet banking period right i know that why it has to out of 1 2 3 4 5 6 6 sentences if i have all except one talking about internet banking this has to be about internet banking okay now i'm going to take uh, let's do one thing i always like to do this we take prince and uh, ravneet's sequence okay and we'll see which one is right so prince says f c a b d e okay and ravneet says c a d e f a so let's see which one is correct yeah let's start um so now i want you to just identify which is the sentence that is probably uh introducing what this internet banking is all about is it f f says internet banking has several advantages okay but is it telling me about what internet banking is not really right c on the other hand so prince your topic sentence yeah i know internet banking is there but c is explaining to me what internet banking is all about banking is now no more limited in going and visiting the bank in person for various purposes like depositing and withdrawing money requesting for account statement stop a payment etc as you can do all these tasks and many more using the online services offered by the bank that's an explanation of internet banking what does internet ban banking entail right so c is my topic sentence no doubt about that so this sets the context right then ravneet says a ravneet says through internet banking you can keep an eye on your transactions okay maybe i don't know but that doesn't doesn't uh, a seem like an advantage ravneet a seems like an advantage right if you have internet banking boss the advantage of that is you can keep an eye on your transaction account so don't you think f should come before a internet banking has several advantages over traditional one which makes operating an account simple and convenient how is that one of the advantages is a so it makes sense for me let me put the sequence here okay c tells me what internet banking is f tells me that it has many advantages a brings out one advantage right now i am left with b d and e if you look at b says security of transactions is a big issue d says this means that by the ease of monitoring your account now what is that this means whenever i have this means or whatever stuff like that right immediately <coughs> you should have an antenna come out what does that this mean let's read it says by the ease of monitoring your account any time that's your clue phrase right monitoring your account at any time means what you can keep an eye on your transactions it's the same thing right how do you monitor your account at any time you always have the access to keep an eye on your transactions that's how you monitor your account so this phrase so and this facility right so this means so if you ask me i would say cfa this means which means this facility that by the ease of monitoring your account at any time you can get to know about any fraudulent activity activity or threat to your account before it can pose your account to severe damage cfad right what else is left b and e so why is it important 
to keep your account safe because security of transactions is a big issue as your account information might get hacked by unauthorized people over the internet CFADB so you're asking questions right and B answers that so how can you avoid fraudulent activity or threat to your account by monitoring your account at any time and this is an issue because there is a possibility of this happening and E has to be the last one guys you got this right uh, Prince <laughs> you got the last sentence right right because you have this very obvious clue word thus and then another very obvious word concluded thus it can be concluded that advantages are a part of internet banking but not without any disadvantages so CFA D B E right so actually when you break it down it's pretty uh, easy it's not a difficult passage at all so maybe you got some links correct right I see Ravneet you've got A D as a link correct Yeah, Prince, you got the last sentence right. So if you if you get if you get uh, I mean if you have a question, what's the last sentence? You might get one point, Prince. So you're following. So it's important for us to get the right sequence here. So now let's look at it. So I want you to pay clues within the context as well. Right? So we've established the fact that C talks about what and all happens on, you know, or what entails internet banking, it sets the pace. F introduces what several advantages, one of which is you can keep an eye on your account. Through internet banking, you can keep an eye on your account, on your transactions and account balance all the time. And this facility also keeps your account safe. Right? This means, which means this facility, same thing because you can keep an eye on your transactions is equivalent to monitoring your account at any time. You can get to know about any fraudulent activity or threat to your account before it can pose your account to severe damage. And then <coughs> you finish off with B and E. So the reason why Somebody said, right, uh, B has to come before and things like that. D has to follow A, no doubt about it. And that only leaves us with B and E and B has a direct reference to D because we're talking about security of transactions, avoiding fraudulent activity or threat to your account, right? So, and then you conclude with E, that's it. Yeah. CFA DBE so good attempt both of you yeah it looks easy now when you break it down right the idea is for you to practice to such an extent that uh, you're able to quickly look at repeat phrases words now this might not be the case in all the passages I mean in all the jumble sentences right sometimes you might have uh, an easy one like this I mean for some of you it was tough but then again that's why I keep saying I don't want to say easy or tough because for some it's easy, for some it's tough. Our uh, pace and uh, uh, the manner in which we learn is completely different. So let's move on. So if you get the sequence right, obviously uh, you will get your marks also correct. So CFADBE was a sequence, which is the following is the first C which is the following is the second, F, which is the following is the third, A. That's it, yeah? So you mark it, it's easier. Let's move on to our next question type. Uh, spot the error. So read the context. This was a barbaric act a heinous crime and there's no place for that in this religion and if you look at the meaning of 
uh, Islam, it means peace. So for Islam to be associated with these types of crimes, these murderous acts, it has really shook the whole community. Do you think there is an error in this context? Yeah, what do you guys think? Uh, Raju says the error is in C. Anybody else? Part one, a lot of you are saying, okay, in fact, I have all the parts now. I have one, three, and four. Two also is added. So one, two, three, four. Basically, you guys are saying all the parts have the error. <laughs> Let's look at it. This was a barbaric act. Barbaric meaning brutal, animal-like, a heinous crime. Again, something that is probably extremely violent. And there's no place for that in this religion. And if you look at the meaning of Islam, it means peace. So far, Islam, so for, sorry, so for Islam to be associated with these types of crimes, these murderers, these murderous acts, it has really shook the whole community. So as soon as you read the context, right, one of your clues should be, there is, there is relevance, right? The, the, the general tense in the context is what? And if you look at it, uh, some, of us, some of us have also come back and said no error. <laughs> it, I want you to pay attention to part four. It has, it shook it has i need the verb three what's the verb three shaken right shake verb one shook verb two shaken verb three so it has relevance to the but it has relevance to the present also right it has shaken it has really shaken the whole community not shook. So the error is in part 4 where you change shook to shaken. Are you guys following? That's the part that has the error. So we, we, we it, because it has relevance to the present, because of all that has happened, that has affected the community and they are feeling that effect even now till now, till the present, right? So it has relevance to the present. It has shaken, present perfect tense. Let's go back, so that's where the error is. And everything else is fine. In fact, this was a barbaric act, a heinous crime. So barbaric and heinous are just adjectives describing act and crime. And there's no place for that in this, and there's no place for that in, in fact, a collocation, right? We've heard people use that in various situations. There's no place for this, or there's no place for that. In this religion, if you look at the beginning of Islam, it means peace. So, for Islam to be associated with these types of crimes, these murderous acts, it has really shaken the whole community. Not it has really shook. Let's move to the next one. The decline of old-fashioned values such as honesty, tolerance, empathy, compassion, respect and reciprocity were identified as having damaging consequences for the society okay so tell me where do you think the error is for this just for prince I'm just gonna go back right look at a couple of uh, verses for you prince If you look, it's not looked. 
right? Understand the context meaning. Because of what had happened, it is having an effect right now on the community. That's the meaning of the context. So uh, for the, the this one, a lot of you are saying uh, option four. Okay, let me quickly highlight something, right? A lot of you came back and said 444. Four, four. Now, these damaging, uh, these consequences are not good for the society, but damaging for the society. That's the context meaning. So, for as a preposition there is absolutely fine. You don't have to make any changes there. Okay? Are you following? Understand what I'm saying. The consequences were not good for the society, but it was bad for the society. Something can be good for somebody, something can be bad for somebody, right? So in that construction, for is fine. So a lot of you came back and said, uh, for is where the error is, uh, replace for, no, nothing is wrong there. But if you paid attention to, this is something that you can quickly overlook, uh, errors pertaining to subject verb agreement is what I see that most of you overlook. The subject is what here? Can you identify the subject in the context? Anybody? Yeah, so Anjali, what is the subject? So all these values are having a damaging effect or damaging consequence for the society. Ah, Sid, that's where a lot of us make mistake, right? The subject is not the values as such, the subject is the decline. Of old-fashioned values is the prepositional phrase, right? Of, starts with the preposition of. So the subject is the decline, which is singular represented by the definite article the. So if it's a singular subject, then I need a singular verb and not where. So I, I, I change where to was. That's another thing that all of us make a mistake with. The decline is my subject here. Yes, of old fashioned values, yeah, it's part of the subject, but the primary subject is the decline. The decline of what? Old fashioned values. And then I've, they've given example, honesty, tolerance, empathy, compassion. These are all examples of old fashioned values and reciprocity was identified. The decline was identified as having damaging consequences for the society. The subject verb agreement error, uh, a lot of us tend to overlook this because when we're reading the context, what catches our mind is the values, which is plural. And I also have explanation of more than one value there, right? So just so that people don't get confused, let me subject verb agreement. Okay? I don't know how many of you got this right. If you got it, great. Yes, it is tricky, Harjit. I agree with you completely. Let's look at the next one. The geosynchronous satellite launch vehicle will function mainly as a delivery system of heavier satellites. But the Indian Space Research Organization hopes that it can one day carry a manned mission, the country's first, beyond Earth's atmosphere. What do you think the error is? I'm going to repeat myself just for Pavan. 
something can be good for the society or something can be good on the society which is correct something can be good or bad for the society that's the construction right it's the same thing apply in that context then you'll know for is correct coming back to this what do you think the uh, where do you think the error is the geosynchronous satellite launch vehicle will function mainly as a delivery system of heavier satellites but the indian space research organization hopes that it can one day carry a manned mission to the country's first beyond earth's atmosphere so i have 3 2 1 no error okay so let's look at this quickly okay i want you to apply a little bit of logic so this vehicle the launch vehicle gslv what is the um let me put it like this okay the purpose of gslv right is to function as a delivery system for heavier satellites right and not off heavier satellites is incorrect right the purpose of gslv is to function as a delivery system for the heavier satellites are you following gslv does not belong to the heavier satellites no why do you need off why do you need the possessive the pronoun that expresses meaning of belongs to or possession incorrect right that's where the error is the error is in part 2 where i change off to four got it the geosynchronous satellite launch vehicle will function mainly as a delivery system for the heavier satellites not off heavier satellites but the indian space research organization hopes that it can one day carry a manned mission the country's first beyond earth's atmosphere more than one satellite noun number is fine pavan that doesn't change uh, either the meaning or the grammar of the sentence right are you following so those of you again uh, this is obviously an error pertaining to prepositions prepositional error right so subject verb agreement preposition what was the first one verb tenses in fact let's move on in paper factories hundreds of employees only lose not their eyesight but also get physical problems because of sitting in one posture for long time one posture for long time so what's what where do you think the error is error in small words and big sentences is scary so this is an easy one as soon as you read it you should know where the error is right yeah why because of not only but also yes that's a very obvious error right uh, this is to do with parallel construction whenever you have um, correlative conjunctions right what are correlative conjunctions either or neither nor not only but also both and so what follows these two has to be same so if i'm saying so the placement of not is incorrect basically if i put not here not only lose it's a verb but also get again a verb right so what is following not only and but also is the verbs lose and get so whatever has to follow these two has to be the same 
class, word class. If it's an adjective, then it both should have adjectives. If it's a verb, then both should have verbs. If it's a noun, then both should have nouns. Right? That's the rule when it comes to correlative conjunctions. Right? This is something that you need to know. So that's very obvious. Error in part two. Yeah. So in paper factories, hundreds of employees not only lose their eyesight, but also get physical problems because of sitting in one posture for a long time. Let's move on. Neurolinguistics has proved that people can possess self-confidence, that they can complete a specific task even though they may lack general self-confidence or conversely be self-confident though they lack the self-worth to achieve a particular task. This is such a tricky one, all these long confusing sentences but Yeah, I noticed that, uh, Sindhu. It should ideally be for a long time as well. <coughs> I completely agree with you and Surat. Yeah, but I'm assuming this was a typo error more than anything else. When I read it, I read it uh, for a long time only. But I then I noticed. So I, I don't think this is the actual question where er uh, is missed. But if it is the actual question, then yes, there are two parts that have the error. Uh, two and four. Right? It should be for a long time. But if it's not, then the obvious error is two. Yeah? So, yeah. So, this one, Joshua says one, Saurav says three, Aditya says no error. So, it's between one, three and no error. So, let's look at it. So, let's break this down, okay? Neurolinguistics has proved that people can possess self-confidence, that they can complete a specific task even though they may lack general self-confidence. Okay, understood. Or conversely, conversely means what? Or on the other hand, right, that's what it means here. Or on the other hand, they can be self-confident though they lack the self-worth to achieve a particular task. So even though they can't complete a particular task, they still feel confident. Now, where do you think the error is? Whether you have may or do not have may, it doesn't uh, affect the sentence grammatically, you know. May is just a probability. It brings in the meaning of probability. So, <laughs> Manab is like one, 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 one. What do you think is the problem with one, Manab? Can you tell me? Okay, in that context, yes, lack of is a collocation, but you don't need it in this context. Someone can lack something. In this context, they are lacking the self-worth. So grammatically, it's correct. You can have a lack of something, no doubt about it, but you will also have constructions where it says, this person lacks this without the of. That is also grammatically correct. Why have proved neurolinguistics is one singular entity, boss? Right, just for you to get an idea. What is neurolinguistics basically? It's the branch. It's a singular uh, noun, right? <coughs> it's a branch of linguistics that uh, probably studies the uh, relation between linguistics is language and Neuro has to do with the nervous system. So probably it studies the relationship between language and the function of the nervous system, right? That's what it has to mean. So you don't have to change has to have because we're talking about one, that particular branch. So just to give you, just to put you guys at rest,
possess means what guys here contain have that's what the meaning is right so i know a lot of you are coming back and having your own versions of how it should be but let me put to rest there is no error in this question type okay you don't have to look for an error when there is no error sometimes these long sentences make you think that there has to be an error in some part it doesn't have to be the sentence is correct as it is there is no error let's go back to the context neuro linguistics which is one branch singular noun has proved that people can possess self confidence can have self confidence that they can complete a specific what's what's their self confidence they feel that they can complete a specific task even though they may lack general self confidence is the probability of them lacking general self confidence right or on the other hand be self confident though they lack the self worth to achieve a particular task so no error boss you can look for errors but there is no error <laughs> okay so all of you were breaking your head to um, what do i say desperately find an error i am sorry there is no error they 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 refers to the people here right all the days there are they okay let's move on i know it's past 7 uh, can we quickly look at one more question type yes i'm sure you guys will be yes okay with that um because gola it's talking about it's not specifying a particular task right it can be any task we don't know what task so a particular task the indefinite article a makes sense there you don't have the particular task because they are not mentioned what that specific task is in the context hey <laughs> pavan is like be smart and don't attempt these sort of questions it's a way it's a trap yeah maybe let's move on what is this sentence improvement let's look at it rahul bajaj has done a great job of taking the company to its present status but it is time that he let go of the reins let go of the reins is what is underlined so what are my options let go off without double f okay step down okay let go to the reins delegated responsibility let go in the reins what do you think we need to substitute this underlined phrase with or do we have to we know what's your question please post it again i seem to have missed it um just to reiterate because this is a, a tie up with grade up we are looking at questions that were given to us by grade up right so uh, <clears throat> we are focusing and finishing off those questions that were handed over by grade up to us so you may not have the question that you might want me to uh you know teach but that's what the session is all about ha huh, so some of you may not know so what's a rain <coughs> what am i doing i'm riding a horse right so the rain is the one that is attached to the bridle right so i can use the rain to control the horse so if i pull the rain then i'm asking the horse to stop or slow down right that's a rain you have an idea now mental picture go back to the context so whenever i am holding it holding on to the reins that means i'm trying to control the horse right i want the horse to listen to me but when i'm letting go of the reins which means what i'm relaxing i'm i'm releasing control i'm saying okay boss you go i'm not i'm not holding you back you go right so ah see uh, joshua has uh, put the meaning of uh rain there so the 
Now let's look at, a lot of you are saying, some of you are saying step down, some of you are saying one, some of you are saying two, which is step down again. So let's look at the context, okay? Now, let go of the reins means now we have an idea what it is, right? Two, release control. Yeah? <coughs> That's what it means. So the actual expression is let go of the reins. OF and not OFF. So that's why whatever is underlined in the context is incorrect. So we have to choose one of the options. We understand what let go of the reins is, right? That can be in the parking lot. Some of you came back and said uh, two, step down. Now, the context is not saying how should he let go of the reins, right? What are all the ways in which this person can let go of the reins? That's not what the context is saying, right? If that is what the context is saying, then I will say, okay, one way in which he can release control is to delegate responsibility. But that is not the context. The context is saying, he's done a great job of taking the company to its present status, but now he needs to relax. He needs to release control. So understand the context. The context is, does not have a secondary question saying, how should he let go of the reins? So the scope of the context is only there. I am only improving that underlined phrase which is let go of the reins which means is to release control. I am not going to go ahead and put option 2 saying oh this is one of the ways in which he can let go of the reins which is to delegate responsibility. That is incorrect. right? It's out of the concept or context. So 2 is incorrect. Let go to the reins is not the right expression. Out. Uh, a delegate responsibility is what I was explaining. Step down again. Why would why would somebody who is put so much effort in bringing one company to a good state step down? Step down means what? He's saying, okay, boss, I'm leaving. I'm quitting. You guys take care of the company. Why would he do that? Doesn't make logical sense, right? So that is also out. Let go in the reins is not the right phrase. So our answer is option one. Rahul Bajaj has done a great job of taking the company to its present status, but it is time that he let go of the reins, relaxed, released control. Okay, let's move on. Are you guys following? So stepping down is not an option at all, because why would he do that? He is the one who has helped bring the company to this present state. So stepping down and you know option 2 and 4 in fact we need more context. We don't have that. We are only improving the sentence pertaining to the underlined phrase. We still have to retain the same meaning that uh, that underlined phrase is bringing to the context. Are you following? We are not Anjali please understand when for sentence improvement questions whatever is underlined, right, you'll have to retain the same meaning. You cannot bring in a completely new option saying and answer your own question when it is outside the scope of the context. That's what option 2 and 4 does. That is why it is incorrect. Let's look at the next one. It must be noticed that under no circumstance should the company go in for diversification. It must be noticed as the underlined phrase. Should I change it? If I look at the options, I have noticed, noticed, noticed in three options. I have noted in one option and I have pointed out in the other option. What do you think will retain the meaning of the context? But or maybe the one that is there also is okay. I don't know. You tell me. In fact, uh, what is there in the underlined phrase is the same as option 1, right? It must be noticed, it must be noticed. Whatever is there in the context is the same as option 1. So, so Sid says it's option 2, Satish says 2, Devjani says 2, anybody else says anything else? Four, I have four. 
4, 4, 4. So it's between 2 and 4. The war is between 2 and 4. The battle is between 2 and 4. So let's look at what can be the answer. 4 is it should be noticed. Okay. So basically between must the modal verb and should the modal verb. That's where you guys must is an obligation, should is the right thing to do. Let's see what can be the answer. Now, um, Uh, 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 uh. Okay, let me give you a picture for, let's understand the difference between noticed and noted first, right? So let's say you wear your best uh, attire, okay? You walk into college or you go to work. Somebody has noticed you, somebody walks up to you and says, hey, you're looking really good today, right? So they've and they, and they give you a compliment, right? So they've, in that context, they've noticed you and approached you and given you and paid a compliment to you. In that context, it means what? They've observed you. They saw you. You dressed really nice, right? Or let's say there was a problem uh, that was, uh, you know, you've been discussing. There's a heated discussion on a problem. And then you provide a very smart solution. So somebody noticed that you have provided a smart solution and they acknowledge that. They said, hey, great, John has given me a good, smart solution. So they noticed it. They observed what you said, right? So noticed, one meaning is observe. One of you, or maybe two of you, noticed that the previous question, there were two parts that had an error, right? Basically, there was more than one part that had an error, which means what? In that context, what is the meaning of noticed? You detected, you identified. Right? Now, let's go back to the context. Let's understand the context. It must be noticed that, do I want a meaning of observed or detected? It must be observed that under no circumstances should the company go in for diversification. It must be detected that under no circumstances circumstance should the company go in for diversification. Or noted. Where will you use noted? I want you to please make a note of this. I want you to pay attention to this. That's what it means, right? Please pay note to what I'm saying. It's very important. I want you to probably apply it, right? Now let's go back to the context. It must be noted. <coughs> so you might have heard people saying the point to be noted is what they're basically saying is what you need to keep in mind. or what you need to make a note of. So in the context, they are giving more like a something that you need to keep in mind, something that you need to make a note of, right? Under no circumstances should the company go in for diversification. Diversification means what? Excuse me. It's if it's a, some economic low point for the company where you know uh, the assets are distributed, uh, there's a variety of investments. That's what diversification. So in this context, they're saying under no circumstances should the company go in for diversification. This is something that I want you to make a note of, right? Obviously, it must be noticed. So anything that have noticed. You can quickly eliminate. But what about it must be pointed out? What about that? That that seems pretty okay. Some of you came back and said option three as well, right? It must be pointed out. See, when you say something has to be pointed out, you're almost like pointing fingers at someone or something and you know, you want to make somebody aware of something. But in what context? So let, if I say, let me point out to you that Manoja has not been coming for work for the last one week. So I'm telling, I'm informing someone of something wrong, something bad that happened, hey, and you need to be aware of it, right? So in this context, it must be pointed out, you're not showing fingers at someone or something, right? So not the most effective option here. 
So here bring to light something that people should uh, know about. Usually something uh, you know unpleasant or untoward or negative. Bring to light. So you're saying something about someone. I, I just gave you an example, right? Let me point out. Or it must be, so, so when such and such a thing happened, I need to point it out to you. Let me point out that so and so has not been coming. Just to put this in context. to work for the past one week. Yeah, so not the most effective option here. So our option is it must be noted. It must be noted that under no circumstance should the company go in for diversification. That's your answer. That's awesome, Deepthi. Good to know. Thanks for coming back and telling me. Let's look at the next one. Since books are quite expensive, that many children do not have access to them. Uh, so the, 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 the two things that are, um, two words that are in uh, underlined is quite expensive. So let's see. Do we change that to something? More expensive than expensive that, expensive too, expensive for. What do you think is the answer for this one? See, I, I want you to, since is your clue word, okay? I want you to pay attention to this. So whenever I have since, and then look at the context, what, what, um, what is the, uh, how can I put it? Let me wait for the options and then see. What if you guys get everything correct? Hmm? Ravani, it's too expensive for, you're saying option four. Vijay says no correction. Saurav says option three. Chetna says no correction required. It's good as it is. So it's between two. OK, I have all the options now. Two, three, four, five, except one. OK, so let's quickly look at this and eliminate the wrong answer options. Since books are quite expensive, then what? No information out. Since books are quite expensive, that many children do not have access to them. Now, let's look at two, okay? I have that. Since books are expensive, that many children do not have access to them is incorrect. Why is that incorrect? Simply because, see, basically this context is giving me a cause and effect relationship, right? What is the reason? Why are many children not having access to them is the books, right? Why are they not having access to them? The reason is the books are expensive, right? Since the books are expensive, the effect is children do not have access to them. So if that is the case, why do I need that here? unnecessary out I don't need that it doesn't make sense since books are expensive that many children don't have the construction wise also it's incorrect third one since books are expensive right since books are expensive I think the underline is still here as well since books are expensive Many children do not have access to them seems the most right thing. Uh, not really, Saurav. Uh, two as an intensifier usually brings out negative meaning. Right? Expensive is just an adjective. Something can be too expensive. But the problem is for. Same thing as option two, right? I can't have since books are 
too expensive for many children do not have access to them is incorrect again. I don't need this for because the cause and effect is clearly stated with the word since. I don't need for as a preposition again. And of course, there has to be a correction because you can't have that here, right? Since books are quite expensive, that many children do not have access to them. It's the same thing here. The only difference is quite, which is an adverb. So, you have to correct the given statement and the given statement is corrected by this. So, the final statement is this. Since books are expensive, Many children do not have access to them. Okay, that's your answer. I think uh, the reason why some of you might have got confused is because the underlined part was not clear. That could be the reason. Printing mistake. <laughs> okay. So even without the underlined part being in, uh, not being correct, you got it right, huh, Raja? Too much. Let's move on quickly. One bonus point. The poor bride candidates will not be able for joined graduate courses in commerce. This is an easy one. I don't want to spend a lot of time on this. Can we quickly finish this? Understood, Ravneet, don't worry about it. Yeah, so this one is an easy one, right? Quite expensive, too expensive, doesn't matter. Uh, doesn't matter. It's grammatically still correct. This one, because you have able, you know, one is able to do something or one is not able to do something. So, obviously, the only option that gives us that correctly is able to join option 3. This is an easy one, right? You are able to do something. It always takes up verb 1. Joins, incorrect. Joining, not needed. Joins in, again, incorrect. So, let's move on. This is the only way through which employee can putting their demands before management. If you look at the underlined phrase, it's employee can putting and then you have there, which means it has to be more than one employee. So we'll have to look at anything that gives us employees. So I can quickly eliminate option two, but then will putting, will puts is incorrect, right? Because when you have a modal verb, it always follows with a verb one. So putting and puts is out, obviously it has to be option four. This is the only way through which employees can put. I'm sorry, Karthik, <laughs> I'm looking at the time. And so I went off on a tangent here. This is the only way through which employees can put their demands before management. It has to be option four. It's an easy one, it's not a very difficult one actually. So. I know we've kind of uh, went beyond uh, the time allotted for today, but um, still, there's one more question type, which is reading comprehension. I just wanted to give you a quick insight into it. We may not necessarily have to do the whole thing, but I'll give you a gist of how to go about it. Yeah, let's look at it quickly. So if you look at uh, this reading comprehension, it's a short passage, okay? It's about 515 word count, though it looks long that's it 515 word count so an average reader can read 250 words per minute so you should be able to read this passage in within two minutes but you're not an average reader and this is not an average exam so which means you have to be above average so which means for a head count, for a word count of this size um, this length not size. This length, you should be able to finish it within one and a half minutes. 
okay that's one thing now for reading comprehension there are very very specific steps that i keep saying one is uh, i obviously need to skim the questions first why i'll analyze the questions i'll see okay how many how many questions do i need to uh, which, which requires a lot of details i really have to pay attention to the passage scan questions are there some questions where maybe if i just do a quick read one and a half minutes i'll finish this passage if i do a quick read can i still answer this question questions like what's the main idea of the passage theme of the passage all of that and then there will be some question on vocabulary either a synonym or an antonym question you finish that first so every time i keep saying analyze the questions put them in categories finish the vocabulary questions first and then if you have the time do the remaining questions that demand your attention or requires details from the passage it is nitish if your reading fluency is above average you can 250 to 300 words per minute is for a competitive exam like this yes that's what you need so uh, let's look at the let's just analyze the questions alone okay which of the following best represents the main idea of the passage skim which of the following makes garment steps in upc meaningless scan what has been the reaction of the farmers to the step of the government as mentioned in the passage scan which of the following has been given as a justification by the government for the steps taken against scan whatever i say say scan which means it requires a lot of details i need to pay attention to the passage what would be the ultimate result of the government step on the nation scan what could be the solution to the problem of priority difference between central government and state scan which of the following best expresses the meaning of the word snowballed ah vocabulary and they want a synonym can i finish this quickly now without reading the passage why not what is snowballed uh, uh, uh. anybody have you have you come across this uh, terminology snowballed so if something like a project or a cam campaign snowballs it means it's rapidly increasing or growing or going at a very fast pace <clears throat> or growing at a very a fast pace right that's what it means so go back to the context if you're familiar with this terminology snowballs you know that the synonym has to be increased you'll get one mark here without reading the passage that is if you know the meaning of snowballed but even if you don't know the meaning of snowballed if you look at the passage i saw snowball somewhere no snowballed snowballed ah right here In the first passage fourth line on says ever since farmer agitations and suicides have snowballed across the country compelling other state governments to consider this as a serious option for relieving farmers business so what can the meaning of snowballed mean here if you follow the news and you know the situation with the farmers right you know that suicides have increased across the country right it has to be that so one thing to do is was let me if i if you already know the term look at the options select the answer you don't know the term go back look at the option in context and then figure out the meaning from context using applying context clues you'll still get one mark without having to go through the entire passage right instead of completely ignoring rc you at least got one mark and the first question that we saw was a skim which of the following best represents the main idea of the passage if you can quickly uh skim do a skim okay take chalo take 2 minutes read the passage right you will be able to answer that first question so the idea is reading comprehension comes with practice because you have to have good reading fluency you have to be able to understand not get worried about or stuck with new and unfamiliar words but still continue reading and understand the main idea or central theme of the passage and move on and try and answer one or two questions if there are vocabulary questions good for you you will be able to get one or two marks if not depending on time you can juggle which questions you want to uh, answer or not but you need to make an attempt right you need to make an attempt so 
Uh, that brings us to the end of the session. Uh, so this is exclusive to, uh, I, again, I don't want to say that this is exclusive to this particular exam because uh, some of the strategies and some of the error types that we've learned is something that you can expect in PO, clerks, RBI assistant, all of those exams as well, right? So it's a, it's a good practice for us. So you need to look at it uh, from that angle. So all the very best uh, for those of you who are writing your exams this weekend. I know some of you are writing your exams this weekend. All the very best. Uh, stay focused and uh, I know you guys will do well, right? So please come back and give us your feedback and I will catch you guys uh, in another session uh, soon. Take care. Bye-bye.